So where is the new Elder Scrolls 6 Redfall actually going to take place in the world of Tamriel? Today we have a huge update on this, but this time it's from an official source in the form of a cryptic message, which is essentially a riddle that says transcribe the past and map the future. Now please bear with me in this video because this is not just confirmation that the Elder Scrolls 6 Redfall is based in Hammerfell, but it also alludes heavily to the actual storyline and the time period that will take place in Hammerfell. And also, I don't think the Elder Scrolls 6 will take place exclusively in Hammerfell. So taking a closer look at this tweet, we see a white aspen tree, an evergreen pine that represents Skyrim, but also what can only be described as a high rock that is literally placed across the border to Skyrim and Hammerfell, literally in high rock, as you can see on the map. Coincidence? I think not. At face value though, if we take a look at this tweet, we can see there are three candles that represent the transcribed past, present, and not yet mapped future. Located here in the not yet mapped part is Hammerfell, confirming the location for the Elder Scrolls VI Redguard to at least partly be in Hammerfell. Or does it? Many people have already reached the exact same conclusion from these candles, including my friend Camel. I'll link his video below, but let's take a look at this objectively from what we actually know about The Elder Scrolls 6 so far in this video. And if you guys want to stay up to date with The Elder Scrolls 6 news on this channel, just subscribe because I actually have a huge storyline lore video incoming. Now to bring you up to date, Zenimax Media, Bethesda's parent company, secretly filed a trademark for the title Redfall back on the 10th of April 2018, clearly labelled as a video game trademark. Then, two months later, on the 10th of June 2018, the same year, at Bethesda's E3 showcase, Bethesda released the official announcement teaser trailer for the Elder Scrolls 6, with a camera panning over an unknown landscape. In our last video, we broke down the distinctive features of this landscape, and we discovered that it must definitely be located here in the world of Tamriel. The camera is panning across the coastline of Hammerfell that borders Iliac Bay. You can watch that full video breakdown linked below. The dead giveaway being the parts of land that jut out into the bay and the mountain range in the background and then the settlement also visible in the trailer. To summarise, so far we know that the Elder Scrolls 6 is almost certainly based in Hammerfell, or we can at least explore Hammerfell as part of the gameplay along with other regions. And we also know, since the Redfall trademark was filed exactly two months before the trailer release, it's likely The Elder Scrolls 6 is called Redfall. Why does that matter though? Well, it's because Redfall is a clue to the conflict that will take place in The Elder Scrolls 6. Like all other Elder Scrolls titles, it will have a conflict, like the Civil War in Skyrim or the Oblivion Crisis in Oblivion. In this case, Redfall may be referring to the fall of the Red Guards, in fact, Red Guards are native to Hammerfell. Keep that in your head for a moment, it is very important information as we dive into this video. So now we're on the same page, we have the latest news. A picture from the official Elder Scrolls Instagram and Twitter. To be very clear, these pictures have nothing to do with the Elder Scrolls Online. The Elder Scrolls Online has a separate Instagram and Twitter handle, as you can see. And if we look closely at the Elder Scrolls Twitter and Instagram pages, they only post exclusively about the Elder Scrolls single player games, Skyrim, Morrowind, The Blades mobile game, and so on. They also post fan-made mods and artwork that people have made for those single player games. They don't even retweet any of the Elder Scrolls online stuff at all. The accounts are deliberately kept completely separate. Scroll all the way through yourself and check it out. 
Also, other evidence is that the Elder Scrolls Online recently announced that they would be returning to a new zone within Cyrodiil for 2021 for a repeat of the Oblivion Crisis storyline. You can watch my full trailer breakdown on that if you want to know exactly where it's going to be based on the map of Tamriel, but it could not be any further from Hammerfell. So now we have concluded that this image is definitely about the Elder Scrolls single player series. Since it's only posted here, let's solve the riddle. The message reads, transcribe the past and map the future. Here's to a happy new year. Let's break it down. This is a map of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Clearly, it's been cut off on the right there to draw attention to the southwest side of the map, with much of the picture being taken up by this huge region of Hammerfell. That's your first super obvious sign. The next biggest standout are the three candles that are overexposed to draw your attention. Firstly, we have the candle sitting on a book, which I own. You could only get this book if you pre-ordered the Elder Scrolls Online Imperial Edition. It's called the Revised Edition of the Emperor's Guide to Tamriel, quite literally transcribing the past. The book's basically about an Imperial scholar who was hired by the Chancellor of the Elder Council, Abnar Thahn, to travel around Tamriel and record all of its locations. Now, the coins placed on top of this book placed atop one another are from the past DLCs released for the Elder Scrolls Online, and you could get them with the collector's edition of ESO Greymore. But we know they are not related to the Elder Scrolls Online in this case. Instead, they're actually representing regions of the Broken Empire. Bear with me. On the bottom, we have the Somerset coin. This was the first region of Tamriel that the Thalmer first consolidated their power when they split from the Empire. The next coin is Morrowind. Morrowind never really recovered from the eruption of the Red Mountain, and the Empire never really held any real power there. Then we have a coin that represents elsewhere. Now, specifically, they've turned the two moons side of the coin facing upwards so you can see them. And in the 4th era 98, the two moons that are cultural icons to the Khajiit disappeared, causing absolute fear among the Khajiiti folk throughout the lands. But after two years, the moons returned, and the Thalmer claimed that they had restored the moons. Whether it's true or not, the Khajiiti credited the Thalmer as their saviors, and over the next 15 years, the Empire actually lost its grip on elsewhere, which is the Khajiiti homeland, and it became part of the Aldmeri Dominion. Then we have the coin on top, which is the Wolf of Solitude coin. But before we read into this, you'll notice that the second candle is also placed next to Solitude, representing the already transcribed map of the past game, Skyrim. Solitude being the capital city of Skyrim and the Empire's last foothold on the region. Now, Camelworks actually pointed out in his video that the candle was specifically placed above where you assassinate the Empire in Skyrim on his ship that he comes on when he's visiting Skyrim. Now, the Emperor at this time was Titus Mede II, but I think this is actually very important for the storyline of the Elder Scrolls VI, you see Titus Mede II was crowned Emperor in the year 168 of the Fourth Era, inheriting a weakened empire from his predecessor, consisting of Hammerfell, High Rock, Skyrim, and Cyrodiil. Only Cyrodiil was at peace when he received the crown. After the Battle of the Red Ring, where the Thalmer invaded Cyrodiil and sacked the Imperial City, the Great War ended with the Imperials signing the White Gold Concordat that forced them to disband the Blades and required them to give up a large portion of Hammerfell to the Aldmeri Dominion, and also outlaw Talos worship in Skyrim to the anger of the Nords, who felt that the Empire had shown real weakness by signing such a contract, and this act caused the Stormcloak Rebellion. The events of Skyrim have us experience the civil war between the Empire and the Stormcloaks of Skyrim. There is currently no canon ending for this war, but what is clear 
is that if Skyrim does not rejoin the Empire or resolve matters, the greater threat of the Thaumur invading a weakened province is great. And we can see they're already sowing mistrust throughout Skyrim's campaign. This brings me onto the third candle in the region of Hammerfell, yet to be mapped. But this third candle is actually placed specifically on the city of Dragonstar, which is not a coincidence. In the third era, the Nords of Skyrim actually invaded Hammerfell to besiege the city in the War of Bender Mark. This eventually caused the city to be divided to a west and an east section. You'll be excited to hear the city also has a very famous arena within it that'll hopefully be present in The Elder Scrolls VI too. But the book A Pocket Guide to the Empire, which you can also find and read in Skyrim, explains that Dragonstar is still, to this day, divided into west and east sections, each with its own governments and separated by a large wall, a true place of constant strife. Now I can make a whole history guide about Hammerfell and what the storyline to the Elder Scrolls 6 will be, but I'm not going to go into too much vivid detail in this video. You can subscribe for my upcoming lore video about it. But in short, the Elder Scrolls 6 Redfall may be about the continuous war the Red Guards had with the Aldermary Dominion that left Hammerfell absolutely devastated. This led to the second treaty of Stross Mackay, not to be confused with the first treaty. The conditions of the second treaty forced the Aldmeri Dominion to withdraw all of its military forces from Hammerfell. Both armies had pretty much fought to a stalemate. So while Hammerfell did remain independent, it was left in complete ruin. I believe the Elder Scrolls VI will start us just after this point in time, since all the other big Elder Scrolls games happen following on from previous game events. So where does High Rock come into this? Well, as I said at the start of the video, the intentionally picked tool-shaped rock can literally be interpreted as High Rock, since it's also sitting on the region of High Rock across the border to Skyrim and Hammerfell. This to me is further confirmation that both regions will be present in The Elder Scrolls VI. In fact, if we look back at the official teaser trailer, we can see we're traveling down the coast of Hammerfell, looking out towards the Iliac Bay to the north. Will this mean that like Daggerfall, we'll be exploring both High Rock and Hammerfell? I've seen a few people saying that we cannot go back to explore locations that we've previously explored in older Elder Scrolls titles. But really, we have already been to Hammerfell in Redguard, when we visited Stross Mackay, and in Daggerfall, and again in Arena. So returning back to Hammerfell over 25 years later, where the technology behind video games has advanced drastically would not surprise me at all, especially since the story of the region of Hammerfell and High Rock has changed massively as well since the previous games. The areas are going to be pretty much unrecognisable. I've also done a video on what we can expect the Elder Scrolls 6 to actually look like in terms of technology, and it's actually based on an official documentary about the Elder Scrolls series. I'll link that video down below. But this conclusion from the trailer that the game will take place between two regions and not just one actually reminds me of another leak we reported on at the start of last year that talks about having a boat to travel from Hammerfell to High Rock across the Iliac Bay and many more things that may prove to be true now. I'll link that video down below. Also, in an hour-long interview with Todd Howard, he talks about what he wants to see in future Bethesda games and what they would have done given the technology in previous games, which will give you more of an idea on the gameplay you can expect from The Elder Scrolls VI, like more NPCs, bigger cities, and more people and systems taking place is a lot of the stuff he talks about. We know that The Elder Scrolls VI has been in pre-production for a while now, while Bethesda finish off their new game IP Starfield which I've already made a video about as well. Since we actually saw real leaked screenshots from the 2018 build of Starfield already, it's clearly further along in development than The Elder Scrolls 6, but at least we get something on Twitter here to get us excited for the game. 
I'm still very sure that we'll be waiting a while for the game to actually release, probably in 2024 or 2025, that seems realistic. So set your hype and expectations, my friends. And let me know if you think I'm crazy or if you have another opinion that might add to this conversation in the comments section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.